All right, guys, we're back with, you've got to assess how permanent are these behaviors that I'm teaching because if they're not permanent, I need to do something different to make them more permanent. So this is Pre, which was one of the puppies from like a year ago. He's probably a year and a half now. Anyway, my friend Debbie had him, but he could never bond with the husband and started protecting her from the husband. Uh, the only problem with that is when that year husband's not a threat. Uh, but you're going to hear about that. And if you said what, you know, he's kind of a chicken liver. And when a lot of dogs, if they're a chicken liver, if guys are real big because her husband's six foot five, dogs are threatened by them. It's, it's true. You know, and if you're a guy, if you're a real big guy and you train dogs, boy, you better be able to, you know, if you said, what drill would you give somebody if, you know, some guy comes here, this guy is some great big guy, and, you know, dogs are barking at him, and it like George. I mean, George is so clumsy in, in his attempts to try, you know, he'll, he'll back over him, trip over him, step on him, and, and then I'll say, you know, and big, weird, crazy move. He's awful. That's actually awful. Uh, but what I would say to them is first be a seated handler. That's going to factor. <laughs> that's going to factor. Don't sit on the dog though. That's going to factor out some of your size. And then just try to have an exercise of making yourself as small as possible. You know, and if you go like, I'd say smaller, smaller. The dog needs to say to it, so it's skittish. You got to be careful. If you will scare it away, it, you'll lose its attention. It'll take off. And whatever they're saying, you're just reversing the dialogue. So this dog has a default down that won't go away. And he did it with her. She would take him to work and everything. It was just, when they got home, he didn't like the husband. <laughs> Which, you know, I just told her to bring him back. And, and Joel already said, Joel's 87, if anything happens, I'm just going to hang on to the dog for now. And then Debbie can get him back. Because there is a place for dogs that don't like strange men. <laughs> Not that Jill's strange, but, you know. And Debbie was, she goes, oh, this is what Debbie said. If you have any single girlfriends that, and then she's like kind of pause, I go, that hate men. <laughs> you know, so I've got some permanence of the behavior. Yay. I even see it. If you said I don't see any consistency. These dogs all do the exact same thing. I haven't seen the dog in like three months. Let's just put it this way. He was 58 pounds when she got him. Now he's 83. <laughs> you know, and then if you said, well, what happened? Well, I, I don't want Debbie freaking out, but what happens is people do start kind of overfeeding them the food, and then they sort of aren't doing the treats as much. And then, you know, things start sort of tipping. Again, I understand because they have lives to lead. They don't have all day to give dogs treats like I do, but that's what kind of starts happening. And then, you know, if anyone ever says it's a picky Labrador, I say there's no such thing. There's no such thing because that I know of Labradors eat any kind of food and then everything that isn't even food. So there's no such thing as picky Labrador. <laughs> you know, there's such a thing as an overfed Labrador that just cannot honestly even eat anymore. You know, <laughs> there is such a thing as that. But picky? No. They eat everything that's food, any kind of dog food, and any kind of other animal food, and any kind of poop. Though I have to admit, my shepherds are the poop eaters around here. Not the All right, so this dog had a default down. Whoops. It had a basket drill. If I sit down, it should go over. <laughs> you know, so if you said, what could you do? How could you augment your default? I think I could get him to wag his tail. Let me see if I can do it. I don't know if his tail's in there, but I think that was with the horses. He did it. He did it. You've got to be able to get that. You said what's... I understand that now, Mike. The tail wag is the micro task. 
My task includes any separate part of the body acting of its own accord. <laughs> the horses, the horses, the horses, the horses. That was from that uh, pit bull. I had that pit bull and I talked to Waggett's tail when I said the horses because it liked to jump. You know, if you said, what do pit bulls like to do? Angus, oh, he has a pretty good, he's not too bad, but they're, they're, pit bulls can jump really good. They can defy gravity. So I told that pit bull, he was like those horses that used to jump. So what I've got is a dog, I think that will do the basket drill. How small is your yay? Very, very small. Very, very small. Everything, all the excitement is being contained within the handler. I don't want to turn on videos and the first thing I say is them rubbing the head. Who cares? I'm just like, who cares what you see, lady? We have our own lives. The handler's job is to get back to the recycle. And I think this dog would do it with a seated handler or a standing handler. He said, when did you hit the pager? When I turned my back in conjunction with, it had the same look. I tried to hit it, I missed the button. I still had the action. If you said there's five things, this is what you need to say to yourself. Five things happening at once. Initially, if, if there's only, if there's five things, they, there's five things that they know happen, but then one of them's missing. You can deal with that. It'll get down to the point if they can see one of those things, they think they know where they're going. He's a wonder. He's an absolute wonder. Again, there was nothing happening a second ago. He wasn't any kind of wonder. He was nothing. He didn't exist. <laughs> you see, Chelsea, they grab it by that claw, initially at least. Oh, he's a very, very wonder. And he's a very, very, and he's a pretty, pretty dog. Pretty, pretty dog. You know, you're saving, you know, honestly, and that's what people need to think of. If I said, okay, threw my hands up, now we're done, and the dog was excited, and you said, oh, look, he's excited. you got to take that excitement and put it in the exercise, not... That was very tedious, and now we're celebrating that it's over. You don't celebrate when you're leaving Disneyland, you're sad. <laughs> you know, I, that's what I say. You're kind of like the psychiatrist where, you know, when people go to the psychiatrist, they're just, oh, they're just telling the story. They're just, but then the psychiatrist says, our time is up, and they're gone. So that's what the dog is thinking. But I haven't seen this dog in, ever how long it took to gain 38 pounds. <laughs> I think he healed and stuff. Let me see. I've got my thing on zero. There's my turn. This hand. Here's my pager. And then you turn this way. He went back. Thing is back there. Didn't care. There's my turn. Look at the head is perfect. There's my turn. So all these behaviors are permanent in this dog, you guys. If you 
you said, well, the only reason is you have the advantage of validating every single behavior with the pager lady. Got me. You got me. I think once you can start triggering impulses in a dog, they're looking more inward for these impulse triggers as opposed to these impulse triggers are happening only from the environment as the handler attempts to ridiculously try to stop them even though the dog is way faster than them. <laughs> Once you can trigger the impulse, your job is if it starts to have an impulse to run away is re-trigger it! Trigger it back in your direction. There's more than I can understand with this pager and I hope I live long enough to understand exactly what's going on but somehow this thing is loading itself up and telling the dog's body they like to react to impulses if you said based on what on, on the ones that chase squirrels and fish and act on every impulse of every butterfly and their name is shoe bottom all right hang on so keep in mind i have not seen this dog but i'm just right back where i was with the pager I'm saying to myself, obviously everything I taught it has a permanence. But that's what you need to say to yourself. I'm going to be the handler that sits down and the dog is, this is an intellectual dog on a lot of levels. And if you said, can it ever like men? Probably not. Um, and especially dogs that are, that don't, that are threatened. And there's, such a thing as, now I tell people with Great Danes and Mastiffs too, there's dogs that are threatened by very large dogs too. Just the, the size of it is a threat. You know, so it, there's, it's just, they do. That's why the handler should try to make themselves small. As small as possible. As small as a ball. <laughs> I've decided we need to come up with a very simplistic child's book. <laughs> Where I've, I've decided we need to hit them at six years old. If we can get them at six, by the time they're 15, they'll have this master. But that's a very permanent behavior. The dog does not know. And I get them back up there with the pager. And I can make them heal with the pager. Under the umbrella of move in my direction. Okay. There's my turn. Boom. Whee. That was my pager. Turn. It's a language. It's a language. You know, if you're just, that's where people are going wrong. I think that's why you shouldn't use words at first. You said you can't add words to this dog in training. That's all you have to do. Make the word the precursor for everything else. Everything else. And if you said, well, then why do you do the pager concurrent? No, that's how fast their reflexes are. That's how fast their reflexes are. Anyway, guys, I'll be right back with a couple more episodes, but... That's how you're thinking of the pager. You're not saying. And Jody, that's what I want you to start doing with your little healer. You're not telling it to get in its place. You're racing it to that platform. You're racing it there. Once you're making them stick, dogs have forward momentum. And they're always directing it in a direction. If you're trying to hold it there, it's just basically a dam that's going to break. I don't know if you can fool them into thinking. Hmm? Race me there. If you said, when did you figure that out? Ah, uh, like three Tuesdays ago mm -hmm. when I realized I cannot even get out this gate without these dogs shoving ahead of me. <laughs> ah, shoot bottom. She's not smarter than me yet today, but she's got a lot of different strategies of getting around me when I my vigilance drops just one degree. She picks up on my weakness and shoves me out of the way. Hi, Linnea. I know it's early out there, girl. You're getting the early morning show. I, I'm going to come back with another good episode, but 
You know, all I'm doing, everything I'm doing, and this is the new 200. This is Chewy's. I'm just going to drop ship her a new one. But for you guys, that's that's a good collar. For It only goes up to 100, but for a starter collar, it's a good collar. If you said, what, doesn't it have 127? If you said, what does a uh, journeyman e-collar trainer need? Probably not 127. If, it, if, if you need that, you're in over your head. If you're just a journeyman e-collar trainer, because I was going to tell you, there's it's... It's a small percentage of them that are going to really need that 127. And if you said which ones are, oh, the ones that are a real ass, I'll tell you. Those are the ones that are a real ass. All right, guys, hang on. I'll be right back.